Hey, what's up, everybody? So this next episode, we're going to be talking about my um, title match, my second fight with Joe Estes. Uh, why there was so much animosity, why I couldn't stop punching. Um, if you want to know a lot of these details, check it out, man. Right on. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Yamato Damashi Podcast. My name is James Ensign. Ensign, how are you today? You're looking trim. Super good. Feel real good. Yeah, I'm on the weight. Yeah, yeah I'm actually here. down to, I'm down to like, uh, I don't know what, what it is in pounds, but about 104 kilos. Been getting my 15,000 steps in a day. I Today, I only got, so far, I got 10,117. And it takes me about 10 minutes to get a 1,000 steps. So I, after this is done, I got to probably get on a 50-minute walk before 12 p.m. so I can get my uh, 15,000 steps in. Nice. So the last time we did one of these career episodes, we were talking uh, your fight at UFC 13 in the tournament. And I was wondering, when you came back to Japan, did you feel that there was more notoriety, more fame after that fight from yourself? Obviously, the UFC was not the platform it is today, but I'm just curious whether, you know, you were going back to Shuto, you were going to do a fight. Did uh, did you feel any difference? Um, Yeah, well, it was a huge thing yeah, to actually have a uh, have a submission or, or like a finish. Because there was one guy who fought before me. There was a bunch of Japanese that actually went in but never did very well. And there was one guy that went before me, this guy from Pankers, Takahashi. And he had a victory over Ishmael, but it was like a decision. He just stayed away from the ground. So it was a big thing because I was one of the first guys from, I'm American, but first guys from Japan that actually got a, a submission in the UFC. So yeah, it, it kind of was a huge buzz in the Japanese uh, martial arts media. Yeah, I can bet. I totally bet, especially considering the size of the opponent, right? We've, we've yeah. worked out been so big. So is that kind of, because Shuto saw that fight and saw how big Royce was, was the thought of doing the rematch with Joe? Because the first fight, we obviously did the episode about your first fight with Joe. Joe was like huge, right? And one of the, the problems you had in the fight was that he just sort of laid on you. And it, it was difficult to not fight because the weight difference was so big. Was it because Shuto saw that fight that they thought, actually, you made the improvements, you're ready, you can do this? No. Oh. No, well, what, what that was, was they, what Shuto wanted to do was he wanted to create a heavyweight champion. They wanted a heavyweight champion for the division and didn't have one. So they felt that if anybody, if there was only two contenders, it would be me and uh, Joe Estes because uh, I, uh, you know, I was actually like considered like the one that was supposed to be headed to get the belt. And then when I lost to Joe, they were saying that it could be a rematch where, um, you will make it a, a, a title match. Yeah, so the, the real um, interesting thing was I actually got an offer to fight in Pride 1. And yeah. at the time, for Shuto, I was getting paid about $3,000 per fight. And what they offered me in Pride was, I think it was $10,000 for the fight. And I was like, holy shit, ten grand for a fight. I was saying, holy mm -hmm. crap. So I was excited. Um, I wanted to take the fight. I don't. They didn't even. It didn't get the talks. Didn't get in, even far enough to get an opponent. But the, I was excited. And when I talked to the Shuto guys, they told me that they didn't want me to go fight in Pride. They wanted me to stay in Shuto. And so what they did to lure me into Shuto was they said that, uh, "How about if we make it a tight? We give you a title shot. We make a title match." And you fight in Shuto instead of Pride. I'm like, okay, I'm taking a seven thousand dollar cut in pay, but my loyalty was with Shuto. I am a Shuto fighter, and I mean, uh, to be the first ever heavyweight Shuto champion. Little did I know, it was the only ever Shuto heavyweight <laughs> champion. But, but to be that was, I mean, I just thought that you know the first ever would be always in the history books. Yeah, and I thought that might be a good title to have. And I opted to, um, you know, fight in Shuto, and I turned down Pride. Wow, that's crazy. But I suppose Pride, it was like the debut show, so you never really know what was going to happen there. But 
Yeah, man, it's awesome that you have got that sort of caveat in history as being the first and only Shooto heavyweight champion. So, yeah, well, you know, Pride was a was a first time in any type of fighting association was going to be televised on TV in in uh, like regular TV in Japan. So, although it was the first Pride, it was it was it was huge. It was just a huge thing. Hickson Gracie was coming to fight in it. Mm-hmm. You know, so the, that whole first pride was just huge. I mean, that was like every martial artist wanted to be in the first pride. And I was uh, actually honored to be offered it and then decided to turn it down to show my loyalty to Shuto and to hope possibly be in the history books as the first Shuto champion ever and yeah. only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hicks and Takata, right? That was the the big yep. main event. And that. Been going, I think, going on quite a long time in the like newspapers and stuff, right? Where uh, Takada had been calling out Hickson, and then uh, yeah, the fight happened. Which, yeah, um, yeah. So, I mean, going into this fight, what where was your mindset? Because you had the loss to Joe. Like, when did you train for it differently? Well, what I, what I found out was that um, I was playing guard a lot. And I felt that, you know, I had a good guard. My my bread and butter was uh, arm bar from the bottom. So I felt that at the first fight, I thought, okay, it doesn't matter. You know, Gracie's always giving you that spew. It doesn't matter the size of the person, you know, with the technique, you'll be able to beat them, you know. And, and what the unfortunate thing for me in that fight was that Matt Hughes was so knowledgeable. Uh, Matt Hughes, not Matt, Matt Hume. Hume. Matt yeah. Hume was so knowledgeable that he just... He just anticipated all my what I was gonna do, and he was telling Joe, "Pull in your elbow. He's going for the arm. Keep your base here. He's going for the right sweep." You know, that, you know, it was like it was frustrating for me because when I heard him saying what I wanted to do, and I saw Joe do it, I was like, "Shit, he's countering everything I'm planning to do." So Matt Humas is such a great coach that he saw he could see what I was planning to do, and he was negating everything I was planning to do. So with that, you know. My whole thing was really not about, you know, being methodic. Being, you're very technical, doing one thing at a time. And so what I just figured that, you know, this next fight, what I was thinking of doing is I'm changing my whole mentality. That being on the bottom isn't a good thing. Don't ever feel comfortable on the bottom. And if you get to the bottom, just continue to do something or get up. So that, you know, there was no specific training. It was just a, a fight strategy that actually changed. And I just thought I was going to be more aggressive from the bottom and, and not stay still and not play so-and-so, you know, play guard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And at one point, right, the, the fight nearly didn't happen because it sounded like from your book that Joe uh, had said that he wanted more money to fight you. I mean... Well, you know, like, if, if, what if we can get Joe S's on, I'd love to get Joe S's on because I only hear the story that Shuto told me, and I don't know what's true and what's not. So it could have just been bullshitting me because all of a sudden, like, I think two or three weeks before the fight, um, Shuto tells me that, oh, they, they might not be able to make it a title match because they might not be able to get Joe S's. And without Joe S's, he beat me. I can't have a title match with someone else. So I was really pissed off because I'm like the re- one of the big reasons why I gave up the Pride fight was because of the title match, and it was too late to actually go back to Pride and say, "Hey guys, I want to. F- I'm ready to fight. I can fight." So I couldn't do that. So I was pretty much uh, in a rock in a hard place, and I was kind of pissed off because you know they were telling me that what Joe was saying was that I beat Ensign. I'm better than Ensign. I got to get paid more in this fight, which makes sense. But at the time, I didn't really look at it that way. I just looked at it, wow, what a fucking cocky fucker, man. He's asking for more money, like they, to a point where they probably couldn't afford to him. So I was bidding, I was getting paid, you know, 3000 to between three and 5000 I'm not sure. I'm not exactly how much it was, but it was, I, was, I know it was about there. And when they told me that, I got, I got to a point where, you know, I just... I'm not giving up the title match. You know, the, the fight money wasn't really a big thing for me because it was only about, you know, three grand, five grand. You know, it was nothing. So for me, it was about the title match. So I just told them, you know, do what you got to do. I told the Chuto guys, just do what you got to do to get them here. And if you guys have to take from my fight money, take my fight money. 
So they were able to, you know, they had they deducted from my fight money so they could pay him. And they brought him here. So that's how it happened. So I was, you know, as you know, with all that happening before the fight, you know, I'm already, the tension's already up before the fight. I'm I'm really like, have this, this, this feeling like, you know, I really want to beat the shit out of him. I want to show him that you, you shouldn't have fucking acted so cocky, you know? So mm. that's pretty much how the, the, the start of the fight was the whole um, atmosphere was set like that. Yeah. Oh, I, so I didn't realize. So they actually, they, they carried through. Cause you, I realized in your book, you said that you'd offered for them to uh, take part of your purse. So they actually did that then. Yeah, they did. So Whoa. my, my fight money was almost nothing. Yeah. I think I, I, f- I forget how much was taken out, but I was, I want to almost say that they were like, they took out like 2000 out of the fight money. Painful. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know if he speaks to Joe whether he actually got that money or, you know. Yeah, I, I would like to talk to him because I did. I was really pissed off at him. Never talked to him after that again. Never talked to Matt Hughes about it. You know, Matt, I'm close with Matt Hughes. I know I've trained with Matt Hughes before. Matt Hume. Matt Hume. Shit, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I trained with Matt Hume before. In yeah, yeah, I went to Seattle to train with him. So, nice. you know, yeah, so... Uh, he might be a good one to get on too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the the stare down in the fight was really intense, and I'm guessing with those thoughts that you just talked about, that was probably in your head, right? Along with obviously the first fight. But was there anything in particular you were thinking when you guys were sort of sizing each other up? Well, like like all of my fights, I'm in there thinking that I'm willing to die for the fight. So for me, I'm thinking this is what I'm thinking is not. It's it's over and beyond the fact that he uh, he demanded so much money. It was more about, re- regardless if he beat me before or not, it was about this guy just standing across me, whether it be Joe Essens or the next opponent, the opponent before, is trying to end my life. So the stare I'm giving him is like, "Fuck, you're gonna try and kill me now? Come, go for it. I'm gonna try. And, I'm gonna kill you before you kill me." So that was pretty much what the thoughts that are going in my head. Yeah. So I mean. The intensity is yes, yeah, something that you probably could feel in the stare down. Yeah, it, it's really like when you see the stare down. I was, you could see how close you guys are. You still, I think you still fist bump to like sort of show the respect, but it, you guys are definitely eyeballing each other to the point where you could tell someone's going to go down, um, and something obviously does. And one of the things I wanted to ask you was, did you do like additional strength training? Because one of the things that surprised me in the fight is obviously that you do kind of throw him and he's obviously massive. Yeah, well, what I did was after the first fight, I, I, what I told myself was that I I felt overpowered. So if, if, I, if there was really any changes that I made, it was the changes that I made was the changes to um, put on more strength and put on more muscle mass. So that that's actually what I did. I actually came in. Um, I think it was, fuck, it was about about three or four pounds heavier. That's it. I mean, but to put on muscle, you know, real muscle, it's it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, you're looking at like maybe two or three pounds in in a six or or a year time. Yeah. So yeah. So I did get a lot stronger. I did have a better mind, different mindset. And then. So in the actual fight, then, uh, when you, you was your strategy to get him to the ground because it looked like you went for a, a, you go you going for a strike first and then you kind of kind of clinch up but you get the better of him. I mean, talk me through what happened. Yeah, well, my strategy was actually to stand with him, and you know I'm not a I'm not a striker, so there's there's just really uh, once you once you know that you start throwing, there I it gets real uneasy for me because I'm not a striker. So instinctively, you know, once you start striking and you get an easy, my, my thing is the, the clinching and getting them to the ground. So it wasn't the game plan, but that was instinctive that I'm just going to take them down to the, and, you know, once I got uncomfortable, I grabbed them. And then I felt that, you know, I felt his balance a little off. So I felt like I could take him down to the ground. So I, I tried to, I, you know, I took him down. Yeah. And then as you can see in the fight, I took him down. I was on his, on top of him and, I, I was just very hasty, trying to throw in hooks. And then when I started losing the balance, I felt, oh, maybe I can just fall for his arm. And he, you know, he defended it well. 
and I ended up on the ground under him in the yeah. same position that I yeah. was in the last fight. Yeah. So did, I mean, what was your mentality in that moment? I mean, did you just have to sort of keep calm and then just remember your training? Or yeah, it's how- funny because uh, when you if you if you get dominated in a fight before that for a couple rounds in that same in that position. Yeah. A lot of there's a there's a good chance that mentally when you get into that position you'd be like oh shit this is the position and have the little mental block on it yeah but it was funny because instinctively my whole mindset when I got to the bottom was oh yeah I'm gonna do shit different this time so I almost felt like um oh this is good good chance to show to myself that I can do things differently wow that's a really good perspective considering yeah like you said I think most people would, wow. Like maybe like 70 percent of people sort of crumble when they go back to that same sort of position it's got to take that extra strength to get through the position that you lost in right um and so technically will me break me de- break down how, how you did that so what i did was uh of course like i said yeah you know i, w- I didn't want to make myself feel comfortable in the guard so instead of uh wrapping my legs and then you know defending the punches and playing guard and pulling them close i decided to you know swivel up sit up try and sit up try and sit up and then it wasn't actually a plan to hip throw him but as i was trying to sit up and he was pushing me down once i got up on my elbow and i could feel that you know i could i could hip throw and then instinctively just by doing so much ground i just got up and did the hip throw yeah and boom and then it's like boom we landed in the mount and i was like hope oh, holy shit i'm on the mount yeah and then you know Right there was, um, of course, you know, my first fight I had with Shigeta Shingo, when I got onto the mound, I got excited and I started punching like just kind of wildly. And it, there was no base behind my punches. It was almost like racquetball slaps, like, like I'm yeah. playing racquetball. On them. Yeah, so I worked on my ground punching. When I got on that, I realized that, you know, I learned that, you know, you got to calm, you got to stay calm, pick your punches, hold on position because he's a big boy. So I didn't want to lose position. So what I did was I just had position. And I started picking my punches. Nice, yeah. That that transition that you did to get into the mount was is really nice way. Sort of especially because of the size of Joe, it, it, you could tell that it's like high level technique. That yeah, it was um, a, it was a beautiful hip throw. Yeah, I mean yeah, it feels weird complimenting myself, but yeah, it was a super nice <laughs> hip throw. <laughs> You're allowed. <to. laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> So we got to get into the finish of the fight because it, there's a lot of controversy that surrounds it. And, you know, when you hear a controversial finish, people think like, oh, what happened? Would the ref jump in too early? Not exactly, right? So he uh, so he taps um, and you continue, you continue striking, right? So people will always be curious in that moment, like what was going through your head? What happened? Yeah, well, I remember I con- connected with you know, a solid shot to his, to his cheekbone. Mm-hmm. Hit him one, and I think I might have hit him another time. And for me, you know, I was like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm in the the beginning process of destroying this guy. I'm gonna hurt him. And you know, the aggression gets up. That that it's it's really neat because uh, I get this this real um, primal instinct that comes on. Like you know, you see your prey weakening, you want to finish him off. So that's that's kind of like the the feeling that I got. I had this okay. He's the, the prey is getting weak. I'm gonna finish him off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be real blunt. I'm gonna kill the I'm gonna kill the prey now. Mm-hmm. And then I remember seeing him start tapping. And then f- as soon as I saw him tap, the whole thing that went through my head was, I didn't even fucking start. Let me finish. You know, let me finish. And then the other thing that went into my head was, you motherfucker, you talk so freaking big. I hit you a couple times hard. I'm like, hit you like I hit you with a couple good shots and you're tapping. Like, you talk to talk, walk to walk, man. You talk to talk. As soon as I hit you one good one, you're going to start tapping. And for me, what went into my head was that, no, you, you can't get away with that. A mixture of let me finish my prey and a mixture of walk to walk, buddy. So I remember thinking that I just got to hit you. I want to hit you one more time, at least, at least one more time before this ref pulls me off. And I remember throwing the punch and missing. And then I thought, one more, fuck. And by that time, the refs are on my waist. My brother's in the ring. My other, you know, my other two cornermen are in the ring. And Bertie, I think it was Bertie Richardson, Peter Leotua, Big Canyon. They're in the ring already. And I'm like, 
I remember them pulling me off to a point where I couldn't do anything. I mean, I, all my power of trying to jump and get on them, and they already got me, like, pulling me off, and I can't get there. And I remember them pulling me and dragging me to the corner of the ring, and Egan has this thing where he holds both ropes, and then he, like, kind of corrals me like an animal, like a, a herded cattle, you know? And I remember looking over at Joel, and I remember it was uh, Matt Hume and Doug Murphy, they were in their ring. They were his corner men. They were in their ring. And I remember them checking up on him. And he was sitting on his knees yet. I mean, like, not. He still, I mean, they pulled me off, tackled me, got me up, cornered me in the corner. And he's still on his knees acting like he got hit, like, 50 times, you know. And I'm thinking, I just hit you one good one, maybe two. So after I was pulled off, I, before coming down, as soon as I saw him doing that, my whole next thing was, don't be a fucking pussy. Get up. And then I thought to myself that, well, if you're not going to get up, I'll give you a reason not to get up. And I wanted, just instinctively, that little primal instinct in me wanted to break away and kick him in the face. So I'm I'm glad I didn't get away because that would have looked horrible. So I wanted, my whole thing was, you're going to act hurt, I'll give you a reason to be hurt. And I wanted to go over there and kick him in the face. Oh. Yeah, so it was like, you know, and for me it was, you know, you get into level 10 and the, the blood's running and, you know, for me it's like, it's not an act. Yeah, it's not an act. Mm -hmm. And I'm here thinking this guy tried to kill me. This guy talks shit. He's not walking the walk. The fucking referee, all he's built up. The fucking referee didn't let me finish my prey. I got, I trained so hard and so long to get to this point where I can finish this guy off and they're not letting me finish my 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 meal, you know, finish my prey. And all that tension, you know, it's like, it, it just, it skyrockets to a point where you get to this, this beast, this a ferocious beast that even you can't control. And it, it takes time, you know, to, you know, for me, it took a, you know, maybe like, I said like a minute before you could realize, okay, wait, wait, no, it's over, it's over, it's over. It's only a fight, it's a sport, it's over, it's over. Okay, so, you know, that slowly... It took a little bit, you know, for me to calm down and, and realize yeah. that, okay, it's over. It's done. You know, it wasn't like I was trying to be a dick. It was just some, this emotional tension, you know, you know, like that mixture I told you about not finishing off your prey, the guy talking shit and about this, this guy was a guy that's going to try to kill me. Mm -hmm. And then that whole thing about, fuck, I'm alive, you know? <laughs> I yeah. mean, think about those, all those feelings at a real high intensity, you know, I mean, one of those feelings alone are, already would be riling your tension, yeah? But all those put together, like, it's like, it's not an act. It's not a show. It's not to self the fight. It was an honest, sincere feeling in my heart. So, you know, that's why it was, like, it takes a while to calm down after something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell it's big, like adrenaline, right? Going yeah. Oh, moment. yeah. It's like, poof. Yeah. And it's like, boom. So... I'm curious to know, especially back then, what was the reception like to that incident? Well, you know, I, I like to say that the the fighters and the fans and the whole promotion they've softened up too much. Oh yeah, like there was no there was no backlash, there was no bad talk. It was all about holy shit, that was freaking crazy. What is that? And that intensity is something they've never seen before, mm -hmm. and I guess. Seeing it happen, you can see that it's not a show. It's not an act. It's something that was really running through my blood. And, I, you know, it was kind of neat because instead of criticizing, I think people were appreciating that, that intensity because you see that, you know, people are just in awe. People just freak out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like, you know, back then it wasn't hypocritical where – they love to see that. They'll use it on the highlights, and all of a sudden, but but before they do that, they're criticizing it. You know, like Conor McGregor chose the dolly through the car. I totally against that, but the promotion goes up and said that's one of the worst things that anyone's ever done. And then they use it in all the promos. It's like, come yeah. on, you know. So it's it's like it's almost like another situation like bodybuilders. You know, they ooh and ah at the size of the muscles, but then they're like, oh, he's doing steroids, just cheating. You know, it's like. Yeah, you ooh and all about that. You know, you should appreciate. You know, I mean, they're, they're doing steroids. You accept it, and you're going to ooh and all and appreciate the size of the muscle. It wouldn't be like that without, you know, you know, without steroids. And you know, for me, it's like 
if I get criticized for the intensity that I have, but they love the intensity, it's hypocritical. You know, mm-hmm. so it was kind of neat to see the difference in the generation because yeah, when that, that shit happened with Siyoshi in the ring. I was about to say, oh, right? Dude, I, we got we got so much shit for that. Yeah. Like we like some of the guy, even some of the fighters, like the guy Strassa and even uh um the Bikuda brothers, uh, corn, corner man, that, that guy, um, I fuck afraid, Hori, Hori, Hori Tepe. Yeah. He was saying that, you know, Shoshi should be prosecuted as uh, for attempted murder. And people are saying that, you know, like guys are saying that we, that it shouldn't be allowed in the ring. He should be banned from rising. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Time to change. Stuff that, stuff that like made highlights back in the day. And people were like, was like, whoa, crazy. That was unreal. You know, did not, it was getting like two police here. They wanted us banned, you know, and the whole art has softened, man. Yeah. 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 It's a di- different world now, right? I guess. Yeah. That kind of shocked me as well, right? The, the rising reaction was, I thought it might have been when it happened, it wouldn't be as much backlash, but you guys got hit with everything, man. Like, yeah. I, yeah. So she, so she even got penalized his uh, fight money. He was taking out a percentage of his fight money. Damn. Yeah, it's interesting to see, you know, like, but it's, it's crazy that you can actually literally compare, like, from back then to what happened recently. So, black and white, yeah, black and white. Yeah. Anyway, on to more positive things. So, you, you get the belt, right? And, um, told me through, like, the celebration in the ring. They, they, they presented you with the belt, right? They put it around you. And you even had Shuto, your dog, in, in the ring as well, right? And that's where the famous, famous picture is, is from. Yeah. You know, you know, the crazy thing about that is the reason why I brought Shuto in the ring was he was like my not he you know you, you usually have training partners that train with you and 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 bleed with you so you bring them in the corner and you celebrate in the ring well shuto was with me i used to live in my car yeah i had an apartment but it was further away so i would pack clothes for a, a week shower out of my car sleep in the car and shuto was the one that was always with me yeah so yeah so so I felt that, you know, with this victory, I need Shuto with me. And, you know, he was the one that celebrated. He's the one that was with me through it all. He got to celebrate in the ring. So I told one of my guys, this guy, Big Ken, I told him that if I, when I win or if I win, get Shuto, bring Shuto out. And he did. And he, you know, he's a big, Ken is a big guy. So the security, there's no animals allowed into the arena, of course. Yeah, right. And yeah, but so he just walked by everybody and just brought Shuto in the ring. And I, I felt it was the victory wouldn't com- be complete without Shuto with me, you know, because he, he was, he, he suffered with me in the car and traveled with me to all the training. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. And it's one of those moments which never really gets talked about that much, right? I, I can't think of any other time where anyone ever did anything like that, right? Yeah. Well, you know what happened was, yeah. After that happened, man, holy shit. We got so much. Shuto got shit from Kodakuen. Really? Yeah. They told that like, Kodakuen is one of the famous halls to have boxing and pro wrestling everything. and everything. And, you know, even till today, Shuto, in the, this month on the 22nd, they have another Shuto event. And they're like, they told Shuto that they've never had an animal ever in the arena. And if that ever happens again, you'll we'll bat, we'll, they're banning Shuto from ever having an event in Korakuen Hall. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was crazy. a huge thing. It was a huge thing. It's kind of mental, though, because some of the crazy pro wrestling stuff that's happening in Korakuen Hall, right? And then just bring in, like, a pet. Yeah, they freaking do, like, break, break uh, fluorescent lights on each other. Yeah, they, yeah. They bleed all over their thing. They throw chairs, and you know, <laughs> I guess it, I guess it's an animal thing. Yeah, you you either love animals, you hate animals. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's so crazy. When people don't the people that don't like animals, they really don't like. They don't really like that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it was kind of a it was kind of a role, like made everything worthwhile. You know, like the, you know the um, giving up pride. Mm. Um, I'll send you a picture too, but I actually got a um, letter from the commission that you have to listen to what the referee says that when he stops you, you have to stop on your own will. And the next time it happens, you know, there's going to be a penalty, you know. So I never got penalized, but they threatened to penalize me. And for me, you know, it didn't, for me, I, 
I was about, you know, I'm, I'm going to be me and that's, that's how I'm going to be, you know, mm. which is not probably the right attitude, but I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to change, man. That's how I am. If the same thing happens, I'm probably going to, the same answer is going to come out. And I actually got that warning um, laminated onto my wall. <laughs> nice. And everybody who comes in and checks out all the pictures, they look at them, they kind of have a little chuckle, like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <funny>. right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I think that 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 fight, I mean, I was already kind of ferocious, you know, you know, but I think that fight actually, you know, the Zulu fight, I, I had a hard time stopping too, but hmm. I think that fight kind of made a little bit bigger exclamation mark, like, whoa, this is this is what Ensign is, the, the fire in his heart, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, you look different like, too. Uh, you come across differently to all the other sort of shooter fighters at that point, right? Because a lot of the guys, yeah, like, shit, yeah. Sport, yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. So different. It wasn't on purpose, but it was just one of those things that my whatever I did naturally just so happened to work well hmm. with what um you know what I was trying to do. It's like you say, there's a lot going on in the background, right? Of like the negotiations going into the fight and stuff. I could see why stuff would spill over. It makes sense. Um, yeah, already, already with my mindset and going to a fight, thinking that this guy's trying to kill me is already tension enough to create some craziness. Yeah, but yeah. all that other plus alpha just whoo, just yeah. made it like just made it explode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, because I don't think Joe ever fought again after that. And do you know what happened to him? Because I there's nothing much about Joe online. Oh, I don't think he. I don't think he's ever fought again. Oh, yeah, no, he's never fought again after that. Yeah. That's right. Well, you, know, you mentioned. I wonder what happened. Yeah, I mean, if the viewers of this this podcast know, put tell us in the comments. Yeah, anybody yeah, knows some... uh, what happened to Joe or where he is or how we can contact him, I'd love to uh, get him on and maybe you know apologize for what I did and ask him the real story of what actually happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'd be cool because would... a lot of the people that comment on this podcast seem to know like loads of little tidbits and stuff. So please, if anyone does know, let us know. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Right man. Now. Yep. <laughs> Cool. Well, I think that does it for this episode. Any uh, parting words before we wrap this up? No, that's it. Um, I'm hungry. <laughs> Me too. It's lunchtime. <laughs> oh, shit. So, yeah, I got today and then uh, tomorrow. So, I'm actually okay. Yeah. I've, I've had these cravings and stuff, but it's not like any type of suffering. I do want to eat, but yeah, I, I know my body's going to start going into ketosis probably tonight or tomorrow morning. And then I'm going to get a good long walk in tonight. And then I'm going to get a good long walk in tomorrow. And then the walk tomorrow is going to be exciting because I when, I when I test myself and I know that I'm in ketosis, every step I'm taking is burning fat, not carbohydrates. So kind of yeah. excited about that. Yeah, so we'll see what, what I weigh in because I'm thinking I'm probably going to weigh in at 102 or 100, even break 100 kilos now. Wow. So I don't, I don't know, man. I mean... I want. I gotta start lifting more because I'm feel. You know, I, I feel super good, but yeah. I almost sometimes when I look at myself in the camera, I say, "Oh, come! I look like fuck. Look like I got. I'm sick or something. I kind of <laughs> look really like thin. Like whoa, fuck. You know. So uh, I'm no, just so uh, that you guys know. If you got anybody that's getting second thoughts, no, I'm 100 percent healthy. I'm fine. I don't have any sickness. I'm. I'm just uh, watching what I eat and getting a lot of workouts in now. So. Everything's all good. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, we will see you guys again soon. Shoot.